Good afternoon, DEFCON. All right, so my name's Kerry. Um, I was a software developer for 18 years within the DRM and security solution space. And around uh, four years ago, actually, to this week, um, I joined the InfoSec game and, and joined Pentest Partners to um, get involved in all the cool stuff that, you, that we all do. So I've been dedicated to red teaming and offensive security tooling for the last two years and an author of several tools that I've released to the community, including Boffnet, uh, Sweet Potato, and Sharplock. I've more recently become a member of the Rubius maintainer team. So what we're gonna cover on this talk today, uh, so I'm gonna give a very quick introduction to Kerberos. Um, I'm gonna go into some Active Directory specifics on authentication and authorization. I'm gonna quickly cover some of um, spoofing attacks from previous vulnerabilities, uh, namely the SAM the admin group of CVs, and then I'll cover the, the premise of this talk, which is a new spoofing vector. Um, so a quick introduction then to some changes that have been made to Rubius to um, exploit, I should say, um, and a new uh, set of enumeration tools um, uh, for this spoofing vector. And then finally, what can be done to sort of um, mitigate these, uh, this new, new vector? So what is Kerberos? So it's an authentication protocol used by Windows and Unix Linux based operating systems. The machines are joined to a common realm uh, to s facilitate mutual authentication of principles in the realm. So a principle being a sort of a user or a computer that was within that realm. And they're, they're identified by both a name and a principle type. Now, Kerberos doesn't actually deal with authorization. It only deals with authentication. So the authorization is left to the implementer of that particular Kerberos stack. And Windows and Unix Linux hosts can be joined to the same realm. So what does a principal name look like? So it's made of your typical name string. So that would be the SAM account name, so John.do, or it could be a user principal name, which is typically in the form of an email address or even an LDAP distinguished name is a, is a valid principal name. And of course, the service principal names for um, computer accounts or service accounts. And there's also the name type. Now, this name type is, is a hint to um, the, the, the Kerberos auth authentication scheme so that you know, the, the, the KDC has an idea of what sort of name principal it is. And as you can see from the table below at the bottom, there's a number of different principal types there. Um, but the most common for users uh, is the NT principal type. Uh, so Active Directory actually uses a fairly complex search algorithm for when you're authenticating with the principal. Uh, it uses multiple attributes within um, LDAP to actually find the user that you're looking at. And then as far as authorization decisions are made, it's always made from what's called the privileged attribute certificate that's embedded inside um, the Kerberos ticket, um, collectively known as the PAC, I guess. Um, principal name collisions can occur, and this has led to previous vulnerabilities um, and privilege escalations in the past. So I've tried to sort of simplify um, Active Directory's method of searching for a principal. Um, so the default, when, window, when you actually log into a Windows machine, it uses the name type of NT principal, and let's say for this example, we got to use the name of John Doe. Now, by default, it will go to the right-hand side of that search. So because we're using the NT principal, Active Directory will actually search the SAM account name field first. And then if a user is not found, um, it'll then actually append a dollar to the end of the name just in case that you're actually authenticating with a computer account because computer accounts generally have a dollar at the end of their name. And then finally, if it still hasn't been able to find a user, it'll switch to the left-hand side of, of that uh, flow, flow chart where it'll search the user principal name field instead and then if there's no username found um, at that stage, you get a user not found error. And of course, any, any time in between those stages, if a user is found, it, it then will try and authenticate um, the password. So the actual ticket makeup within an Active Directory network, so the green area is what you'd say is part of the actual Kerberos RFC. Um, that contains sort of the client name or the C name. 
uh, and the service that the, um, the ticket is, is destined for on a start and end date. And then the Microsoft specifics sort of come into play, um, which is the red area of, of, of the ticket. Um, now, you can actually have a ticket with the pack missing altogether. And now when it comes to um, Windows-based authorization, even though um, the outer green ticket is actually valid and it has a, a client name that's within Active Directory, you'll actually log on as an anonymous log on if the pack is missing. So as far as Windows is concerned, you always need the pack really to validate um, the user within, within Active Directory. So with that, with that in mind, so what, what actually happened with you know, the SAM, the admin group of CVEs? So back before the patch for the SAM, the admin CVEs, you could actually request the TGT without the pack present. So what the actual vulnerability was, you, you would do that, you'd actually request the TGT without the pack being embedded inside it. Now the ticket is valid for eight hours, so in between that TGT that you've requested, um, so I'll re rewind a little. So first you actually create um, a machine account uh, using the, um, the Mac. Um, now that machine account would be named similar to, a dom uh, let's say, a domain controller. Um, the only difference is the SAM account name field won't have the dollar at the end. So it's exactly the same name, but it doesn't contain the dollar at the end. And then you request your packless TGT, which means that the only thing in the ticket is the C name itself, so there's no pack in there at all. Then you rename um, the account to something else, n nothing that exists with an AD, but you do have at least a, a Kerberos ticket now that looks like uh, the domain controller ticket. Now, because you've renamed the account, you then request a service ticket from the KDC, um, and the, the KDC will realize that there's no pack embedded inside that ticket. So it will use the same search criteria as I just covered on some of the previous slides, but it'll use the, the official Kerberos C name that's embedded in the green part of that ticket. And because you've renamed the account in between the point where you've got the TGT, it would, it would have then actually found the real domain controller account and embed the pack for the real domain controller, and that resulted in um, a privilege escalation. So this is going back to the search algorithm again. This is the area within um, the SAM, the admin group of CVEs that were affected. So it's the right hand side there where the SAM account name is searched and then it would depend the dollar and so on and so forth. So what did they do to fix the SAM, the admin? Basically, you can't request the packless TGT anymore. Uh, Microsoft deemed it that uh, it wasn't a, rel a reliable way to identify uh, users within AD unless you had a, a pack embedded within it. Um, there were some other hardening attempts, so uh, the SAM account name fields also now must end with a dollar whenever you, an unprivileged user creates it, and a few other um, hardening effect, um, artifacts were made to the um, user account control settings but you can actually still request a packless service ticket. So what's the new spoof in vector? So obviously some, some account name had been looked at previously and it has been hardened um, quite considerably since that group of CVEs. So I decided to have a look at the user principal name attribute and see what we could do with that. So the user principal name or the UPN is made up of uh, the username element, the at, um, and a, a domain suffix, so it basically looks like an email address. Now to modify that particular attribute within Active Directory, you're looking to have write permission on the public information attribute set, or generic write over a computer or user account within Active Directory. So these are the sort of the um, prerequisites needed to, to abuse it. But duplicated UPNs are not allowed, uh, in the same way that duplicate SAM account names are not allowed. So how exactly can we, can we spoof if no duplicates are allowed? Well, as it turns out, you can actually set an invalid user principal name within Active Directory. It doesn't actually have to have the domain suffix. So from you can see from the screenshot there, we've got the John Doe account where the SAM account name is set to John Doe, but you can actually still update the user principal name to mimic that of uh, another account. So let's say the domain administrator in this case. But they, there's another, another difference to the search algorithm then is, the, is going back to the, the name type hint that I talked about earlier. 
if you specify the name type as NT Enterprise as opposed to Principal, which is the, typically the default one used within Windows, the search algorithm changes and it actually searches the user principal name first before SAM account name. So as I'm sure you can, you can glean from that, um, basically you can get your spoofed account name to be found first prior to the real, uh, the real account that's sitting within Active Directory. So as part of this, um, I made some updates to Rubius and they should be live on the current master branch on GitHub. Uh, and basically a new argument has been added to specify the principal type. So you can spell from the group that we've seen at the start uh, of the slides, you can actually now specify the principal type that you're using. So as an example there on the left, that's how you would typically authenticate using Rubius at the moment and by default that would use um, the NT principal type as opposed to the enterprise type. So uh, in, a, in a typical Active Directory network, the screen on the left there would actually, you'd be tempted to log on as the domain admin. And since the domain admin password is not super secret, you get a pre-authentication failure because the password is wrong. But going back to the modified John Doe account that I just showed you earlier, once you add the principal type of enterprise, the search algorithm changes, and then it actually ends up for um, finding your John Doe account. But the ticket that you actually get back contains administrator as the username. Um, so from the outset, the ticket actually does look like a domain admin, but it, it's not. The, the pack inside that ticket still identifies John Doe. But it's only the outer green part of the ticket that I showed you earlier that make it look like it's a domain admin. So what abuse factors do we have for this? So like I said, Windows is completely out, it, it purely relies on the pack for, for authorization. But when it comes to Kerberos authentication on your, your Linux and Unix machines, which leverages the GSS API, they tend to do things differently. Um, like I said, the pack is very specific to sort of Windows-based um, environments. Um, so what tends to happen is GSS API stack will actually rely on the green parts of the ticket for validating the username. And then the permissions for the user is done as a second stage. So uh, it may do an LDAP search on that name that is extracted from the ticket. And more often than not, that ends up being the SAM account name um, that it's searching on. But of course, we've, uh, we've authenticated using the user principal name. But other solutions also include mapping Kerberos principal names to local account names. So for example, you can create a machine using root dollar and that will actually log you in as root on Linux. Andrew Bartlett actually discovered that, who is the person that discovered the original um, Sam the Admin group of CVs. And he basically realized that using the, um, the Mac permissions and the, uh, having the ability to create a machine um, with a low privilege user, you could call the machine root dollar, pass that ticket to SSH and then you'd be logged in as root and that issue actually still exists today and it's a no fix. Now the issue with that though, you can't actually impersonate existing AD users because you wouldn't be able to create the, the machine in the first place uh, because you'd get a collision with a SAM account name if you were trying to impersonate another user. So that's where this new technique comes into play where you can now actually impersonate valid um, Active Directory users. So these are the services that I've seen um, so far that are implement G or Kerberos authentication via GSS API. So SSH, I've confirmed, is, is vulnerable to this as well as Postgres database. Um, I just haven't had the time to check all the others yet but essentially if any of these are claiming Kerberos authentication and GSS API support and they don't look at the Windows pack, they're all going to be vulnerable to, to this sort of attack, would be my guess. Okay, so down, on to the demo. So Rube, both of these, these um, are live already, so that I made them live just before the talk. So Rubius has the new um, argument so that you can specify the principal type. And I've also created a new um, set of Python tools to allow you to enumerate potential uh, vulnerable Linux or Unix hosts within an Active Directory network. So it's a little bit small, but um, we, we'll work through it. So what I've set up here is, again, we're going back to the John Doe account and to be able to, or the prerequisites to be able to actually um, abuse this issue is having sort of generic right over an account. 
Now, you'd need to authenticate as that user, so shadow credentials has worked, for example, so you don't necessarily need to do anything um, you know, brutal like changing the user's password. You can still use shadow credentials with this sort of technique. Um, so what we're going to do now is just change the properties of the user principal name to, from what it was to administrator. Okay. And you'll see obviously in Active Directory that the user principal name is now set and ready to spoof, but the, the SAM account name is left as it is, so we, we, we're using John Doe. So I'm just going to show that without specifying the principal type, you'd essentially be trying to log on as the domain admin, which is incorrect in this case. So when that authenticates, you get a pre-authentication failure. But then if we use the new principal type argument and specify enterprise, the search algorithm changes, and now we're authenticated as John Doe, but with the username of administrator. And if you look at KList, you'll see that that has been um, imported, and from the you know, just looking at it, it does look like an administrator or a domain admin, but the pack actually says differently. Now, the GSS API tool, uh, what the way that works is it does a search with inside Active Directory for looking at the operating system field of every computer object, and any that don't have the word uh, Windows in there, it assumes it to be a, a, a Linux or, or basically non-Windows based host. And then once it compiles that list of machines, it will then try and connect to each one of them over SSH to determine what authentication schemes it supports. And then if it does realize that, that particular host supports uh, GSS API, it flags that host as, as, as potentially vulnerable. So you can see in the output here, there are two machines found. One is Ubuntu and one is CentOS. Now Ubuntu and I believe all other uh, Debian based um, Linux operating systems don't have GSS API enabled by default, but CentOS, Red Hat Enterprise Server, they do. So the minute you join a CentOS or Red Hat based um, Linux server to an Active Directory network, you're gonna be sort of vulnerable to this sort of attack. And then the final stage is now that we've got our ticket imported and ready to use, we can use SSH with the minus K argument to indicate that we want to use Kerberos authentication. You have to fully qualify the username, so you'll see administrator at adgenge.com, and here we connect it. But the big question is, of course, what groups are we a member of? So by doing a quick ID, we can actually see with it we are logged into the Ubuntu or at the CentOS host as the domain admin. So I did contact MSRC about this and they basically said the issue I reported is as designed. Um, I was sort of questioning whose design they were talking about. Um, <laughs> so I had a quick look at what the RFC says and the RFC says it you know, quite clear as far as I'm concerned. Principal names that differ only in the name type should identify the same principal. So they are not listening as far as I can see to what the Kerberos RFC spec says. So what sort of mitigations? Well, Microsoft themselves could harden the user principal name by ensuring they all have a domain suffix. Um, or additionally, they could cross-check the user principal name against the SAM account name to make sure that there are no collisions there. Uh, but in the meantime, um, defenders out there, what, so what kind of approaches can you take? Um, I guess disable anything that's GSS API-based authentication that's joined to an, an Active Directory realm or the less drastic approach may be monitoring for sort of user principal name updates that don't conform to a valid UPN and then obviously investigate those sort of um, anomalies. So I think I'm running out of time for actual questions. So what I will do if anybody does want to ask a question, we'll certainly, uh, I'll certainly hang around outside if needed. I wanna give a big shout out actually to Charlie Clark, AKA, um, exploit PH. Um, he's been a sort of a great sounding board for some of the um, Kerberos shenanigans, I'll say, that we've, we've discussed on this talk. Thanks for listening.